it's April 21st, um, 2022. I'm watching the news this morning. This one happens to be on channel two. And up pops, this is the local news, not the CBS, see the BS this morning. Um, and up pops this really interesting planning board, whatever that they let into the area, um, which I'm sure upsets just as many as it pleases. Um, it's called NJ Weed Dispensaries for Recreational Sales. And just by reading the highlights, it tells such a story of the humanness and where in the 20th century they have all been, where they have all landed. Like Martians from outer space being led by some outside force. They think they have a voice. Some do, some don't. And then what on earth are the humans up to? When I look, I'm just like, I don't know. I mean, I... It's not the act of smoking weed that bothers me. It's reading the lines, or between the lines, of how they got, they accomplished this whatever. Um, it's just like, and then it goes into other stories. It goes into stories about um, the uncleanliness of our housekeeping in the fifth, the lower 48 states, what Canada must think of us as the whatever upstairs. I mean, oof. we must be like the worst neighbors to have. Um, so here it says NJ Weed Dispensary for Recreational Sales. Now, here's the word pattern. It says, Rise Patterson, Ascend Wellness, Rochelle Park, Apothecarium, Maplewood, Zenleaf, Elizabeth, Curaleaf, Edgewood Park, The Botanist, Egg Harbor Township. Like, am I reading off, like, the Academy Award winners of, like, some neglected, quiet place in, like, just doesn't get the right appreciation in this upper northeast whatever we're in? Then, on the opposite side, but somehow integrated, they put in Rise of Bloomfield. And if I had someone to look up to and I could just hold his arm for a moment, put my head on his arm and not have to look at him because I'm just so embarrassed of how humans have turned out in this area. While I've been held here not really having a place to call my own, I'd say it really does feel, and I didn't want it to be this way. It's all like bloom and doom. And that comes out sounding gloomy. Like, I feel like Eeyore. Like, in, if this is Winnie the Pooh, I really feel like Eeyore daily. It's like, it's not who I want to be, but it's just what I suppose is needed at the moment. Um... Then there's another, oh, look at this, there's a second apothecarium, but on the other side. One side has Maplewood, the other side has Phillipsburg. Uh, then there's a Zenleaf over on the other side. That's Lawrence Township. Elizabeth has some competition with Lawrence, it looks like. Then there's Curaleaf, Belmore whatever, however you pronounce that. Then there's the cannabis, instead of cannibalism, cannabis, and that's Department Ford, or Deep Pit Ford. 
Then there's the botanist in Williamstown. That's frightening. Um, and then there's another cannibalist, I mean the cannabis in Vinland. Um, so I don't know, that's where recreational marijuana sales begins today in New Jersey. They're just to myself. But this in a Jack and the Giant fee fi fo fum is a really interesting, highlighted story that actually has great significance in whatever, wherever, whatever the blades of grass are up to that I can't find on a daily basis, but I, whatever, and I'm not one of them, but like I can see the towering flower I belong to. Don't know what to call myself in this situation. And I'm looking up to the flower that I need to get to. And I'm not a hummingbird, so I don't have wings to, like, get up to the flower. So that's really confusing to nobody who went to special isolation school where we maintain our integrity intact at all times. Um, so, um, so that's one of the interesting whatevers this morning. A new report from the American Lung Association says New York City is seeing some improvements in air... Oh, now this is a new story. I've never heard this before. They say they're talking about air quality and they're giving an update about New York. Um, when I was at this rooftop uh, Easter thing that, again, there was not much cloud cover, so whatever. Um, the, um, the gentleman, who I suppose was the host... I, I guess that's a proper... I mean, like, again, I, and I even said, because Lynn asked me on when I came home, and I said, here's the thing, Lynn. I was like, it's like everywhere I go. I walk into the room, nobody introduces... They, Some introduce themselves, some don't. Nobody has, like, official, like, titles that they explain how the room is set up or constructed in hierarchy. So I look to the tallest gentleman, because the other one was 15, and then I had my 10-year-old, um, and he was the host for the whatever, only because he was the one who spoke the most. And, I mean, I'm in a, these strangers put on this beautiful table um, spread of whatever the locals eat, and I was, they were gracious enough to invite us, so I went. But there was no hierarchy established. Um, even with Anthony on the drive there, I was asking questions to prepare myself, anything I need to know, like, who is he, like, what nationality is he, like, what's whatever, and, I mean... Again, nationality only because, like, what's the base language I need to, like, look out for or listen for? But not that I told Anthony that because him and I don't speak. But, um, but he said Italian, and I'm like, oh, okay. And then I went, and I was like, this does not feel Italian. I mean, it feels a lot more at home because, I mean, it's not Aronsani, but it's also not New York Italian either from other whatever. I mean, Italian gets to be really confusing in New York because there's a whole lot of like competition between the Godfather movie and Carlito's Way. And then you have like the Sopranos who it's like the Sopranos are like uh, he again, watching the war in Ukraine or the the godly mission in Ukraine or whatever they're calling it. Uh, the Sopranos felt more like the Ukrainian version of 
the Italians. Um, but the Carlito way was more of the Latino version, but I didn't even watch these movies, but just from the small picture window that they gave, uh, and the way that they spoke, I mean, like, these are different family or different statesmen from far, far away, not the states in the interior of the lower 48. Where the lower 48 is a, a different whatever conversation. Um, but today they're putting up smog results. Quality. The State of the Air report finds that between 2018 and 2020, New York City experienced fewer unhealthy days of high ozone, also known as smog, recording its lowest levels ever. But New York remains 14th on the list of cities most polluted by ozone. As for particle pollution, also known as soot, the report found New York City had its best ever level and was taken off the list of 25 worst cities for that measure. I think we... See, so, you know, like... In this particular time frame, they keep mentioning over and over and over mask mandates, vaccines. They keep saying this. They keep changing the information, though. So nothing really sticks because you're like, yeah, okay, in like about two hours, it'll just be changed. So the communications is not really, I mean, it's obviously some kind of organized level of the criminals moving things around or trying to explain their, themselves so the bigger fish don't just crush them. Um, and then the bigger fish having to atone for whatever they got themselves into in this mishmash. But at least that's what it feels like from a nobody special position. Um, I mean, what other way could they possibly explain themselves in all of this information being so jumbled and never coming out clean on one station, no less? So, but the thing is about New York air quality, they don't even, like when you have high photon in the eye, in the sunlight, and memory starts to either erase or crumble, or you're moving through time and space in a way where it's hard as in like inside the machine to recall pieces that you've already experienced, um, repetition, is important. Um, again, they've used like that eyeball time for marketing pieces to make money off of it, like for brand recognition and whatnot. But again, it's been misused and mispronounced and misformulated for quite some time, which has led up to this. Um, but such as myself, who doesn't have the formal education because that wasn't, I wasn't invited into that pathway to success. Um, and being held in almost like an isolated fashion where whatever like crazy Ponzi schemes they were creating in New York or in the Empire or in the Big Apple or elsewhere, um, they, didn't in, they didn't involve me. But I can see clearly just how it's affected some inner and outer pieces. I mean, the more that I look, I can see the trails or the entrails. Um, but this part with, I mean, I can feel it in the breathing, but to live here, they don't, there's like no warning label. There's no like, you could be here or we can move you. You probably have better quality of life and you have better breathing. None of that's been... And then if you stay, where's the benefit? Who's paying? Other than it's taxing my health. But it's like, it's taxing my health and I have to live poor and isolated inside of a city that I doesn't like me and I don't like them. Wow, this is really, I see why humans, I mean, it's just like, what's the human construct purpose? We saw a lot of that around the world during the pandemic with not a lot of cars on the roads, at least. But who knows? All right, let's get over to you for that first alert forecast. Yes, Chris, well, we want to keep it going. So that is the challenge there. Today, the challenge is to enjoy this day, even though we are going to see increasing clouds. We're starting out with... Now, yesterday I said I saw parts of Sakaro, Not the whole movie because it's too intense. It's... 
it's it's a number seven, like seven in a kind of a way. I, while I am your biggest cheerleader from afar, I, yeah, yeah, I, I am so frightened of what you all partake in, but I, not that I want to stop you. I just, I respectfully sit on the sidelines and I'll watch just to get an idea of what the word means and a construct um, for explain elsewhere. But, um, so yesterday I had said something about, like, if the lower 48 from Canada, from the North Pole down, it will be directional for orientation since there's been some murder on the Orient Trail. Um, from under Canada, if we're the lower 48, and Mexico, there's a border, there's a whole lot of people that we are not prepared for as receivership, and they're told not to come over. This explains from the federal agent's point of view of what they're being told to do, because they're a piece um, within the moving part of the puzzle. Um... But what's confused, and they're, they're run by federal, which I think they're saying is President Joe Biden. But what I don't understand is why sharpshooters are not at the border. Because some of them, they say they, they've gotten in four times. The guy's like, why do you keep coming in? He's like, for jobs. I can't even get a job. How did this guy, why is he coming here for work? And, like, what's going on in Mexico? I mean, there's a lot of layers of why aren't they addressing the real issues. But sharpshooters at our border, because we're not invading other territories, but the people coming in, I mean, how is that seen? That's, I mean, don't we have a right to defend ourselves? So on the border, like, bullets work faster, so this way there's... I mean, because it seems like from watching this piece, they have a lot of responsibility. It's frightening because they're out in desert. They don't have a lot of backup. I mean, shoot first, don't ask questions. I mean, it's not like these are diplomatic relations flying in. It's not that echelon. And not that they're throwaways either. It's just we don't have enough independent wealth in order to take on this level of floaters, I suppose you could say. I mean, I, I, there's already housekeeping rules on the interior, and now this is just adding insult to injury. I don't understand why there can't be one solid say-so and say, no, stand yourself up at the borders, and if they charge at the fences, shoot. Why is that, I mean... I don't think that that's unreasonable just to protect the families and the children and the businesses and the way of life in the lower 48 from Canada at this point, based on the fact that we have other interior issues going on and that would at least alleviate a lot of attempts or whatever. I mean, you... you, you start a program where they're shooting first and not asking questions and it's just whatever, bodies drop. I mean, it sends a very clear message and then it sets a stage and a platform for other things to be spoken about in the way that they kind of need to be. That they, I feel like they've just been neglected. Welcome back to CBS Mornings. The Texas-Mexico border is seeing record numbers of migrants trying to cross into the U.S. and start a new life. In March, border officials reported more than 221,000 encounters along the southwest land border. That is nearly 28 percent more than last March. Texas Governor Greg Abbott says he launched Operation Lone Star last year to respond to these big increases in crossings. The project diverts billions of dollars in state taxpayer money toward border protection. Lilia Luciano went to the border and rode along with the Texas Department of Public Safety to gauge the success of the operation. This morning, she's in Mission, Texas, in the Rio Grande Valley. Leah. 
And here's the other thing. Uh, for the state of Georgia, um, New York is asking the question, if these whatevers keep running over the border and they're not shooting them at the border and people are getting in and then people are starting to infiltrate other cities without people watching or knowing because there's so many at one point um, and it's you're under siege, uh, that whole theory of a nuclear power plant going online in the state of Georgia, which they mentioned the other day, it puts, again, the entire eastern seaboard, northeast seaboard, in jeopardy. It puts the U.S. in a position that's dangerous. But there's a lot of this... I mean, like, I was watching a piece this morning, which I'll hopefully get to, and it's almost like the understudy, which also has the initials U.S., um... Why are their high-level officials doing understudy work, understudying all of the really highly organized criminals? Why are they allowed in that position when they're in destabilized areas outside the U.S. when we have responsibility of nuclear energy or have been commissioned in some fashion? I just don't understand this. Why would you put volatility pieces purposely in place? I mean, again, there's just so many questions that it... I have more questions than I've ever gotten answers for. Lilia, rather, good morning. Good morning to you, Jamie. Well, we spent the last two days touring the border by land, air, and water to get a deeper understanding of exactly how Operation Lone Star works and why is Texas spending about $3 billion of taxpayer money on efforts that are mostly under the jurisdiction of the federal government, something that critics of Governor Greg Abbott have called an expensive political stunt, but the governor says is necessary. Think of how much cleanup they could have done. A couple sniper diaper rifles, a couple of bullets, and then there's only one attempt at the border, bodies drop, and then eventually people see the bodies as they come over. They go, oh, maybe we shouldn't go forward. I mean, it just it makes sense. It's common sense. It's not, like, highly technical. I mean... Who wants to have to educate a whole lot of people, but, I mean, you start to see just whatever, they start, they stop coming over. They start looking for other whatever in, and then that alleviates a lot of pressure on the interior crew to work to do and focus on what they need to do, especially since... Georgia seems to be building this nuclear power plant and not stopping just because Border Control's having problems. And there's been a whole lot. And then there's the dirty side of that with who's paying who to let whom over and so on and so forth. But again, neat and clean operation would just be at the border with a rifle or whatever they call it and a one-time whatever and never have to worry about it again to secure the border where are you headed so we're now we just uh, one of the troopers got an alert on a camera that went off so that's what we're responding to to another ranch that's lieutenant chris olivares of the texas department of public safety his team's mission operation lone star it's a state-run, taxpayer-funded operation Governor Greg Abbott launched last March to deter migrants from crossing the border. For the most part, no. Just to deter. What happened to prevent completely? A lot of them we've talked to, they're saying they're trying to get to San Antonio or Houston, and they're looking for work. But of course, with the, within those groups, you do have criminals. Because the federal government and not states have the power to enforce immigration law, state troopers yeah, and Lieutenant Olivares' team can only arrest people for trespassing onto certain private ranches they reach across the border. Using choppers, 
boats. Mexico is right there. Yeah, can't miss it. Drones and cameras on the ground to coordinate locations. They're headed east. Yeah, they're headed towards us. These men were handcuffed and charged with trespassing, a misdemeanor. Being out there, being able to make these apprehensions and also keep the ranchers safe, that's the most important thing. So it's kind of a security for the ranchers. Well, not just ranchers too, but also for the entire country because what we do know that these individuals are not staying in Texas. Governor Abbott says DPS is meant to... See, they're not staying in Texas either. That means that then the problem travels. But who's tracking these problem children or problem areas to protect Texans. They have apprehended more than 200,000 migrants so far. They've arrested and my whole position is the U.S. who has some Article 9 that they have to uphold according to what's being televised in this area. Um, I have not, I've my Title IX has been violated. My rights to Title IX in New York my entire life, I've been discriminated against. I haven't been able to find work, sustainable work for myself in a non-criminal or whatever. I mean, in a participation way, nothing's been offered necessarily. There's been small jobs here and there. Um but nothing significant and nothing that I can, I have no retirement money, I have no anything, but yet they're making exceptions for other things coming in. And then there's other layers, such as like the nuclear facilities. There's got to be some kind of safety plan put in for that that allows for such secured protection of the borders. I don't understand why that's not being investigated, but... Again, Title IX, they're making a big deal out of it now. I had never even heard of it before. But it's, for me, being violated while I'm in New York. And I'm, again, I have four boys. I don't even know how to get them to participation levels that they can keep themselves safe over their life frame. Arrested more than 11,000, including cartel members, drug smugglers, and cop killers. But according to a ProPublica, Texas Tribune, and the Marshall Project investigation, more than 2,000 of those charges stopped being counted because they were unrelated to illegal activity at the border. Meanwhile, Operation Lone Star cost Texas taxpayers about $2.5 million per week. And 10,000 Texas National Guard members have been sent to the border to aid in apprehensions under the program with no end in sight. Still, some private property owners are taking matters into their own hands. This whole long wall was built uh, by a private property owner. The owner of this land built it up, and on the ends of the wall and the gaps, that's where DPS and the Texas National Guard are surveilling. The DPS boats, armed with heavy weaponry, patrol the Rio Grande River. Primary goal of the mission is to stop the criminal activity from taking place from entering the state of Texas and making it further into the interior. That sounds a lot. That's from a professional. That's from somebody who's in the business. If that is what his objective is and what he's been told by the federal government on our side of the border of the U.S., I am unclear why it is so hard to make sure that they're armed, equipped, and that nobody gets a second chance to come through or over the fence and put their lives in danger, since they are the first line of defense for the rest of us while we're trying to handle whatever we're trying to handle in other states, in other cities. A lot like border enforcement. Right. But that's not up to states, that's up to the federal government. Well, but one thing to understand is that Operation Lone Star is a comprehensive border strategy because the federal government has failed to take any type of action or have a strategy in place to stop some of the criminal activity. But given the high number of crossings, that deterrence strategy may not be working. This is your fourth time trying to come in this month. Four times in one month. How is that even allowed at any layer when you have a seated U.S. president that's in charge of important things in an stately manner? And when there are corrupt major cities already that have evolved with psychologies of their own 
uh, due to other mismanagements in prior administrations and in prior whatever leading into wherever we are at this time. ¿Y por qué sigue viniendo? Why do you keep coming? Pues porque está difícil en México. They told us they weren't intending to commit crimes, and all they have left is debt and a broken dream. Exactly what you're saying now. The dream has ended. What was that dream about? Sacarla a la familia. To help your family. Hacer un futuro. To have a future. Having done these ride-alongs now for years along the border with Border Patrol, I was struck by the massive number of troopers that are deployed from all over Texas into just a handful of counties to do these trespassing arrests within only the ranches that they're permitted to by the owners. So you have to wonder if they're not there, they still have to call Border Patrol whether they encounter asylum seekers or in areas that they're not authorized. You have to wonder, if they weren't there, would Border Patrol be the ones to just come in and detain the same number of people? Tony? Yeah, meanwhile, it's costing the state of Texas $3 billion, pretty big price tag and pretty big guns on those boats as well. Lily, thank you very much for your eye-opening report. I had a video of a police encounter with an eight-year-old boy in Syracuse, New York. He's creating outrage. What police are saying... Is this the town where they're trying to bribe police in order to have these body cam videos so they, I mean, like, there's this weird problem area in gray areas that put the police in danger and harm's way. Um, I mean, it's just like... Uh, it is so difficult to keep you all safe. For keeping us all safe. Um, now this little bit from Stephen Colbert is interesting, which I greatly appreciated. On CBS. <laughs> Bad lawmakers and they get a water mist. Now this is interesting. Um, apparently yesterday they said something about the Capitol uh, being around six hours in my south. Um... They, um, I was just thinking about triangles, an inverted triangle, but whatever. So, um, there, there was something that they said airspace there is like really important. Again, I don't really hear that talk in New York, so I don't know what the FAA rules are. Again, I'm not in an airport situation, I don't know pilots, I don't know ticket counter people, I don't get to travel a whole lot. Um, in fact, in the last decade, I really haven't traveled at all. Um, so, and that's a sliding scale. Um, so, this thought of controlling the airspace, like there's the FAA version but that's, I don't know, like, do you call that fruit fly? Is that an acceptable term? Is that something going to aggravate the heck out of, I mean, because I'm not, not a pilot. I mean, I, again, but it's, but there's the aerospace, which is like, I think, geospatial, which has a different calibration. It's from like the outside of the dome down but FAA f flies through it, but it's almost like there are two air airspaces. There's the ones that fly vertical, and then there's the ones that fly horizontal. So there was uh, two in Army parachutes um, um, who were unannounced by FAA, but they had a sporting event that they flew into the stadium with. Um, I was actually in New York once. Um, somebody brought me to a place where I was able to see that. Actually, maybe it was technically Jersey. I don't really know. 
again, I didn't drive, so I, I wasn't really, I was, I was observing, but I don't really know the landscape very well, um, from the ground anyway. Um, so anyway, so they made it into the sports arena, but then there's these talks where I don't even hear the commentators or the people who do newscasting, they don't even talk about it. They just said something about the FAA, right? But FAA, they're horizontal flyers. They're not the vertical flyers. And like, there is a difference there, isn't there? I mean, again, I'm just asking a whole lot of questions because I don't really have anyone to look up to. It's over six foot and I'm stuck in six foot under syndrome. And it's become a very painful waiting in existence. What's up, man? For what to watch, we had a dancing Jamie Yu. He's parachuting in for Vlad with a yeah. parachute story. <laughs> Isn't this what Vlad does? Like a little he does, dance? You know, he, does, like, he does do that. Does he? Okay, yeah. so here we go. We begin with a scare at the U.S. Capitol. You don't have, have to, to do it, Jamie. I don't, okay. <laughs> and no one wants me to do it. Okay, I'll stop. And like again, I'm in an open, exposed containment unit between the sky and the ground, these people are in some kind of a studio. I don't know what a studio is. I've never been invited to one. I've never been inside of one. I don't know if they have pre diff like different, if they have pressurized cabins almost where the air pressure and the gravity is kept within a range. I don't know if their air's better filtered, HEPA filtered. I don't have access to that level of care in my day-to-day. -day. So my health is being affected at a different rate than people that look like they might be the same age as me. Stop. <laughs> Capitol prompted lawmakers and staff to evacuate. A small plane was flying near restricted airspace close to the Capitol, and it turns out it was carrying demo parachuters from the U.S. Army to Nationals Park to put on a show before last night's ball game. Here is the problem. Capitol Police apparently were not aware of the plan. Yikes. Yeah. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi blames the FAA for its apparent failure to notify Capitol Police of the pre-planned flyover. She called it outrageous and inexcusable. In a statement to CBS News, the FAA said it takes its role in protecting the national airspace seriously and will conduct a thorough review. Somebody's in trouble today. Yeah. That, they should have been told about that. Yeah. I, yeah, absolutely. Well, earlier we mentioned Florida's new law restricting what teachers can say to young children about sexuality and gender identity. It's part of a... I don't even want to get into that. That's a royal... That's like a princely racket conversation with blades of grass. I mean, or actually maybe they are the blades of grass. I mean, that's a... The blades of grass conversation was never supposed to ever, ever intimate or point to any misconduct to the flower and the hummingbird. End of story. I don't understand why this is becoming so blown out of context and why they can't recapture the title and fix reputations that have been damaged by taking care of some real stuff. Uh, and here are blades of grass. Plus issues. Now, an impassioned speech by Michigan State Senator Mallory McMorrow has been picked up on social media as she fights ugly allegations from a fellow lawmaker. The lawmaker released this fundraising email attacking McMorrow for wanting to groom and sexualize kindergartners and wanting to teach eight-year-olds that they're responsible for slavery. If that is a conversation by a border patrol issue that has now gotten in and now gotten some kind of journalism what they feel teeth into what is a meadow and blades of grass and a flower and a hummingbird beautiful setting for a family wedding if they've gotten their border control teeth or feel that they have, it is not that far of a stretch of how they're going to 
create such derogatorous rhetoric in the circus that they call public media at this point. And there are far greater security concerns, and reputation is one of them to secure. So I don't understand why these pieces out in, I can't even say the meadow, because they're not in the meadow, they're in the whatever that's trying to gain access to meadow. And I'm not going into who's tending to the garden because there are weeds now growing in the meadow and blades of grass. And then it gets very, very difficult. And there's bigger security concerns. Here's how McMurrow responded to the allegations on the Senate floor. I didn't expect to wake up yesterday to the news that the senator from the 22nd district had overnight accused me by name of grooming and sexualizing children in an email fundraising for herself. Who am I? I am a straight, white, Christian, married, suburban mom who knows that the very notion that learning about slavery or redlining or systemic racism somehow means that children are being taught to feel bad or hate themselves because they are white is absolute nonsense. People who are different are not the reason that our roads are in bad shape after decades of disinvestment or the, that health care costs are too high or that teachers are leaving the profession. I want every child in this state to feel seen, heard, and supported, not marginalized and targeted because they are not straight, white, and Christian. We cannot let hateful people tell you otherwise to scapegoat and deflect from the fact that they are not doing anything to fix the real issues that impact people's lives. Republican State Senator Lana Theus, who made the original allegations, did not apologize, but responded. It's, I see where she was going with it. But on the receivership end, on this type of media, it's like blinking light bulbs. It's like, it's like touching two wires to hot wire a vehicle or some kind of process. Um, sometimes the wires spark and then sometimes there's no reaction whatsoever um, because she didn't, depending on whether she wanted to be a fire starter or not, I don't know. Um, but the land and the ground and the weed weeds are so polluted and convoluted that the message sometimes, although intended to be one way, the message no longer works because there's been so much disruption while other people are living in 22-foot ceilings and safe. There's the rest of us who are in the exposed area and the exposed area is turning up into a way and fighting for management within itself. And it feels like there's no backup in order to keep stable features in EMS in, or EMT intact the way that's needed. It feels like the backing up of what needs to be anchor points um, has been mismanaged to the point where it actually now looks normal, but the message and communication is being misrouted and misappropriated after even internal efforts are made to uh, target a conversation. It feels like it's somehow being whatever. And now this is the reaction at the table. Um, and Tony DeCopo says he has lots of fam teachers in his family, so on and so forth. And his suggestion is, like in my area, my son is one white child, and it's a whole lot of the rest of the class is pretty much not him. Don't know where. He says they're from China. I can't tell. I don't know. I don't know if they told him that. Um, it's unclear. But the curriculum 
in the class, for the whole class, him included, um, is horrible. And it's not necessarily the teacher. It's not, I, I don't blame the teachers. What I blame is the curriculum before the children even got to this point in this classroom. It's the curriculum. There's no career path to success laid for them. There's no personality testing to see what they might be good at and to guide them into those fields or even have that conversation or to gear a program towards them. It's happening in other places in the city. It's just my child under Title IX is being discriminated against yet again, as was I. To another, and, and I want to go back to the beginning, which is the uh, laws restricting what teachers can do in the classroom. I've met a lot of teachers. They're in my family. Uh, they, I've done stories on teachers. Trust your teachers to do a good job in the classroom. They're, they're professionals. They can get it done. I can't. Totally different set of circumstances. In New York, it's already an infected city. They don't give a crap about my children. Um, and it's been proven. Um, and then there's this, what are they going to do? And I don't even see the other population. Like, they're only interested in themselves, and I don't know why they're here in New York. New York doesn't belong to them. There's a lot of people in New York that the city does not belong to them. The management does not belong to them. But they're acting as if it does. If you have an issue as a parent, you have a right to call your teacher. Yeah. Just be handled locally. Yeah. Don't call, have a conversation. You don't need to call your politician. Call the teacher that's in front of your, your children. Everything is so divisive and so hot button trigger. Well, yeah. and you can hold two ideas. As she says, she's yes. a white Christian mom. You can hold these two ideas at the same time. But you know, a lot to unpack. There. Okay, well, we're going to end with a photo that I absolutely love, guys. That yeah. definitely takes the cake for the best birthday glamour shot ever. Take a look at Queen Elizabeth posing for her 96th birthday. Yeah. Don't you love that? The yes, Royal Windsor. Yeah. <laughs>